Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Mastermind Minutes. My name is Gary Okigroso. I'm the managing partner for Franchise Growth Solutions. And if you'd like to learn about what we do, just hit the link below the podcast uh, post here, and uh, you can learn about Franchise Growth Solutions. For those of you new to Mastermind Minutes, it's a very simple format, very simple concept. We have one guest, we ask one question, and we get one expert answer, typically in minutes, not hours. And as we always say, we realize that very often that's not long enough to get all the information. Sometimes it's a bit of a tease. So at the end of the program, we will uh, get all of the guests' contact information. It will also be listed on the podcast. So if you want to further the conversation, learn more about um, the topic, you certainly can do that. And today, my guest is Mickey Kennedy, and Mickey founded Baltimore-based e-releases 22 plus years ago to help small businesses, authors, and startups increase their visibility and credibility through press releases. Mickey's service provides small businesses with a press release service that they can actually afford, giving them access to the media and a national newswire all with a personal touch. And that is really, really important for those of you who listen uh, to my podcast. You know that my clients are primarily uh, startups and emerging brands, and they can't go out and afford 50, 80, $100,000 a year for a PR firm. So Mickey, before we get into the question, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing and a little bit more about e-releases, and then we'll, we'll get into our topic. Okay. So um, I started, uh, I guess, 25 years ago, I was uh, pursuing a graduate degree in creative writing in Northern Virginia. Uh, it was with an emphasis in poetry. So I assumed I was just going to wait tables the rest of my life. And uh, after a summer of working on concrete for 10 hours a day, I decided I needed an office job. So I uh, was ended up at a telecom um, startup and I handled several things, including PR and we were faxing. And so I was having to program a machine with a hundred numbers and, and hit uh, send and wait the whole day while it sent. And because we were publishing telecom numbers, uh, journalists started calling and saying, could you just email us a word document with all those numbers in it so we can copy and paste and a light bulb went off and I said, you know, email is so much easier than faxing. So I mentioned it to my boss and he said, you should start that business. And so I, I spent about a year reaching out to journalists and building a database and, and did launch, um, uh, almost, uh, 22 and a half years ago. And uh, it's just grown from there. I think when I launched, I had almost 10,000 journalists who had subscribed. And now working with uh, PR Newswire, uh, we include a, a Newswire distribution, a custom national distribution with our send. And we're still emailing journalists as well. So um, it, it, it works. Uh, it's affordable. Um, we work with small businesses, startups, authors, all different types of companies, and we help them get uh, you know, media coverage that otherwise they, they just wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Well, I, I love that. And, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention, and it is certainly a very necessary tool for smaller companies, startups, as I mentioned at the top of the program, you know, PR can be very, very expensive. Getting earned media can be very, very expensive. And until um, e-releases, and uh, I know, I think when we spoke off the air, uh, I mentioned to you that I, I do some PR Newswire. I think some of these platforms that exist uh, and your service in particular are a great tool for companies that ordinarily would not use, use um, press releases as a way to uh, stay relevant or stay up on the, on, on the uh, internet. So with that kind of as the backdrop, why don't we first start by talking about how to use press releases to generate media attention? Um, and you can give us kind of an overview on that and why someone should even be doing this. Right. So uh, basically a press release is, uh, it's a very simple format. Uh, you could just type into a browser press release template or press release sample. Um, it's a, a third person uh, written style. It's obje uh, generally objective. If you have anything that's really over the top, it's usually enclosed in a quote uh, from a company official or someone. And uh, you basically are just sending this out uh, to the media in hopes that they'll write an article about it. Uh, the ultimate goal is not to have the press release syndicated, which does happen with some of the uh, 
services out there, including PR Newswire, where the press release appears on several websites, the exact press release. What you're wanting as the ultimate goal is to have that turned into a, a article where someone's written about you or, or mentioned you in an article. And, and, uh, and that's, that at the end of the day, they call that earned media. That's the ultimate goal of it. And so when you write a press release, so many people write it of, this is what I want to get out there. This is what I want them to turn into an article. And they don't think about, did I position this in a way that um, the readers of these publications would find of interest? Uh, what's in it, you know, the journalist has to decide what's in it for my readers uh, or my viewers. And so that's an important thing you kind of have to reverse engineer and design so that strategically your press release is newsworthy or relevant for readers. And so that journalists would say, yeah, this makes, uh, you know, perfect sense for me to write an article about it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you say that, and I, I, I agree. We, uh, my last company uh, that I was heading up when I was uh, still an employee, uh, our PR firm, we would have many discussions. If we had a piece of news about a franchise, for example, opening a new franchise, we would typically ask them or we would work with them to create two or three versions of that press release. So we might do a version where that information was relevant to a writer who was writing about franchise companies. If it were a food franchise, we would take that press release and kind of repurpose it so that we could send it to people who, who were writing about food and beverage. Uh, if it was a new site, maybe in a new piece of construction in a town, we would, again, repurpose it and send it to people who were writing about business or real estate. So we would take that one piece of content and repurpose it, as you say, and reposition it. And, and more often than not, we, we didn't get three articles out of it, but very often we would hit the nerve or strike the chord with that particular writer because we had positioned it in just the way that that's what he or she was looking for. That's what you're, that's what you're referring to, correct? Exactly. Uh, you, you want to uh, have the release uh tailored towards the industry that you're trying to reach. Um, and if it's for local media, you want to, you know, appear as a, a locally relevant uh, business. And so uh, it, it really depends on who you're trying to reach. And the mistake that a lot of people do is, I want to reach everybody. So I'm going to create this generic mediocre thing. And it really appeals to no one. Right, right. So it's not a one size fits all. And it's a, you can't be all things to all people. Got it. That's a, that's a great tip. So in the franchising world, which is the world that I live in, um, what would be the best way, say, for a franchisor to position a franchise opportunity through a press release? Uh, I guess I, the tag I would have to that, to that question is without having it sound like a sales pitch. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I would um, talk about uh, things like the growth of the company, the outlook, um, and 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 make create where anybody reading it would see there's an opportunity here without you saying there's an opportunity here. Now, later on in the release, you're going to mention that you do have uh, franchise opportunities in particular areas or things like that, but you want to make it obvious that this does seem like a company that's that's growing, it's positioning itself well. You might have some quotes from um, other uh, early franchisees or people who've had experiences. Uh, that, that, that's really great. Quotes are a great way to uh, anchor a, a press release and can actually really make someone want to write an article if it's a knockout quote. And uh, you know, the, those, those are the quotes are the one thing that so many people just take for granted and just put something there. And I'd say spend a little more time with your quotes uh, so that uh, whatever you say can't easily be paraphrased because a journalist will just paraphrase it into something and take take away the mention of a, of a quote unless th there's something lost there. So make it so that it's painful if they want uh, to remove that quote. Yeah, I, I agree. One of the other things that I've learned over the years, again, I'm a trial and error guy. I probably should should have called you years ago. Uh, you know, is that oftentimes the reporter 
finds it more compelling to speak with the franchisee, the local person, the person who's launching the business, taking the risk, as opposed to the the corporate guy at, uh, you know, or the corporate woman over at the franchisor who's probably going to give them, you know, the, the, the kind of the party line um, because they're looking to sell franchises, whereas the franchisee, the local, the local uh, owner operator is going to really be talking about their wishes, their dreams, their desires, more human interest, what they had to do to get the business, which I think uh, would connect to a reporter in a, in, a, in a better way. Would you agree? I would. And I think that franchisees are a great opportunity for franchisers to get uh, their company mentioned and out there. Uh, one of the things that I wished more franchisers would do is to provide a little bit of guidance for franchisees on how to talk to the media, uh, allow them to talk to the media, and even provide them with some templates of potential mm -hmm. press releases they could do for local media. And, uh, you know, each franchise can start uh, you know, relationships with their local media. I always tell people local media is the easiest media to get. You don't need a service like ours to do it. There's probably less than 10 people in your area that will ever write a report about you, including probably radio and TV. So mm -hmm. just find out who they are, reach out to them via email and just introduce yourself. And as you have newsworthy events or milestones, uh, you know, share them with them. That's great advice, but but just for clarification for the for the audience. So I, I live in the New York City area. Okay, local media would be the New York Times. We're not talking the New York Times. However, right. in the suburb that I live in, in the Pascag Valley here in northern New Jersey, we have a, a weekly paper called the Pascag Press, and they are they're the go to newspaper if you want to know what's going on kind of around the three or four towns in the in the valley here. That's what you're talking about when you talk about local media. Right. Yeah. For most people, it's a local newspaper and their local newspaper isn't like the New York Times. It's uh, it's actually a, a small town publication for the most uh, part. Uh, there might be a, a free weekly. There could be a, uh, a, if you're lucky enough, a business newspaper or magazine. Uh, sometimes there's like these business news uh, uh uh, relationships um, and, and cranes has some presence in certain mm -hmm. places. Um, but there's also um, TV and radio. There's segments that sometimes uh, run where they interview or spotlight businesses. You know, just find out about that. Uh, for them, you want to reach the producer or the booker, not necessarily the host of the thing. Uh, radio and TV is a little bit different than uh, you know news outlets where you're really just trying to reach the journalists in that case. Right, right. And what do you, uh, what would you recommend um, if, if, a, if a, a franchisor or a franchisee, the person actually presenting or distributing the press release, uh, leveraging, for me, leveraging that content is always very important because uh, I believe that if the press release lives online, um, and someone Googles, I don't know, hamburger franchise, and that's in your press release that you, your press release may actually come up sure. in a Google search. So would you recommend, um, if possible, kind of feathering in the words that come up, you know, that rank higher in a keyword search for that particular topic or, and or perhaps amplifying the press release, say on a LinkedIn platform, if you have a lot of LinkedIn connections, how would you leverage that piece of that, that, that press release in a way to drive people perhaps to a website? Right. So if if uh, it's possible, I always recommend putting it on your website, even if it's just a blog. Um, some mm -hmm. people find creating a separate mm -hmm. newsroom just isn't something that they, they're able to do. But most people have a blog or a blog presence that they could uh, put the press releases, share it with their Facebook, their LinkedIn, um, you know, get it out to as much social as, as makes sense. And when you're composing the release, of course, you know, include keywords that would naturally be relevant for you. Um, I always say uh, there's people who have formulas, you want to have a keyword density of a certain thing. I, I, I think that that's overthinking it. And those things mm -hmm. change all the time. I say just write naturally, including keywords in there, and be sure not to abbreviate. Because a lot of times when I write articles, I will mention release, 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 and the word press isn't there, or maybe it's just mentioned once. So make sure you're not using a shorthand and that you are getting the complete keyword uh, used throughout. Okay. Yeah. That then that certainly makes sense. Um, last, last sub question on the topic here, because 
I, I, I have clients and have had clients in the past where what is news to them is not necessarily news to a writer. And I believe that, yes, you should have a well-crafted press release and it should be you know, distributed properly. But at the end of the day, if you really do have news, people are going to be interested in it. So if, if, you, were to, if you were to give the audience uh, a last piece of advice here with respect to how to determine what is actually a press release or something that you're bombarding a writer with is, that's just hey, it's really not relevant. What is there a, is there a benchmark? Is there some, some trigger that says, yeah, this is something that would be of interest? Um, I think a good uh, rule of thumb is to always have someone uh, within your industry read the release and also someone outside the industry and uh, get their feelings and thoughts about it. it there's no hard, fast rule. Uh, but I think that if you look at uh, through the lens of a reader, uh, would a reader of a, you know, let's say that my core audience is a particular, uh, you know, reader of a news publication, would that person find this of interest? And uh, you have to be true to yourself and say, I don't think so. Is there something I could add to it that would make it more relevant? Is there a repositioning of it? Uh, you know, PR professionals are called spin doctors for a reason because mm -hmm. they can take the <laughs> same piece of content and rotate it and look at it through a, a different perspective. And sometimes that different perspective is the real difference that makes it a little bit more newsworthy and a little more relevant for the actual uh, end readers. Yeah, and that makes perfectly good sense. Um, Mickey, any last advice, last word you'd like to give uh, our audience, and then we will um, give your contact information. Sure. So um, I always recommend that when it comes to a press release, uh, a lot of people really uh, overthink the writing of it. And uh, they're not rocket science. Almost anyone can put one together. I would spend my energy and time in the strategy of it. What should you be writing about rather than writing about it? Because um, I'd say about 80% of the press releases that we issue are not really newsworthy and they're well-written releases. And uh, if someone sends it to us and asks what we think, we often say it's, it's, it's a fine press release. There's nothing wrong with it. But that being said, it's probably not the press release that's going to get media attention. So um, I, I put together a, a masterclass that just teaches strategy on uh, press releases. It's completely free. Uh, if you just visit ereleases.com slash plan, P-L-A-N, I basically walk through all the strategies that work for my customers and they work again and again. And there are things like being contrarian, uh, you know, using numbers, statistics, you know, crafting your own survey or study. And you can do that, uh, your, you know, yourself with your own uh, customers or leads, but you can also just partner with a small trade association and have them share your survey link and they get a mention in the survey as well, which boosts your credibility, aligning yourself with a small trade show. And it helps them because they're always looking to get some media attention. So there's lots of little strategies like that, that people can utilize. And I feel like that's the important part where people should be spending more time is, is the actual, what I should be writing about rather than how it's written. Excellent, excellent insights. Uh, our guest today, Mickey Kennedy, who's the founder of Baltimore-based e-releases. Mickey, people want to reach you to get more of those little tidbits and tricks and tips and, you know, ways that they can be as effective as the big guys out there. Uh, how, do, how do we get in touch with you? How do we reach uh, you? You can just go to ereleases.com and click on contact and you'll reach uh, one of the editors uh, as well as I get CC'd on all of that. So uh, we, I can contact you there. And we also have our social media on ereleases.com as well. Feel free to reach out to me through any of the platforms that you prefer. Great. Well, Mickey, this has been fascinating. We have to have you back on because there's so much more to talk about on this topic uh, that I know emerging brands, small business operators really, really do need to uh, understand. But I thank you for your time today and um, have a great uh, rest of the day. You're very welcome. Thank you.